So in gastric and gastroesophageal junction cancer, there's actually a lot of uh, interest and energy now. Um, there's a lot of uh, new clinical trials, new drug development being pursued in, this, in these two cancers, um, which are often bunched together. Um, I think that uh, immunotherapy obviously now has a role, and that's been a, 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 you know, one of the bright spots in GI cancer of immunotherapy, in my opinion. Uh, has been gastric, uh, its role in gastric cancer. So, so that's leading the way in many ways for all the new drug development. But there's, beyond that, there's a number of new targeted therapies that have, uh, that look, that look promising, such as Cloudin and, um, and, and second generation HER2 inhibitors and VEGFR inhibitors, which may be used now beyond the salvage setting and, and targets that nobody even knows much about, which have drugs going on in, in gastric cancer, such as uh, matrix metalloproteinase inhibitors, and, and a whole host of other drugs that are out there which are, which are looking interesting and exciting. So in many ways, we're hoping that in the next few years, gastric cancer will start to be further subclassified based on uh, predictive biomarkers of drugs. So we'll be treating this cancer hopefully uh, in the next few years very differently than we are today. The most exciting thing about G-junction and gastric cancer is certainly the, check, the evolution of the checkpoint inhibitors and the, t the tumor cancer genome atlas, which gives us a handle on a lot of the molecular features that may be worth targeting. It's a different question whether we can intervene early enough and make a big enough difference in patients. Because the disease is typically advanced by the time we find it, because it has so many consequences in the body, the malnourishment, the, the general sense of ill-being, frequently abdominal metastases that affect the function of the bowel, those make it a very hard disease to treat. And I, I worry that treating advanced disease will never get very far along, and the key would be finding the disease earlier if we could. In, in Asia, they find it early because they screen for the disease. It's that common. In the West, we don't do that, and I, I believe it will forever be a great challenge in these patients because they're so sick for the relative amount of cancer that they have. So gastric cancer is an orphan disease. In U.S., we have 20,000 cases each year only, where compared to metastatic lung cancer, breast cancer, or colon cancer, there are 200,000 cases. So it's a rare disease, and historically, you know, to lead the innovation and, and ideas and, and drug development, it's really important to try to treat these patients in the setting of a clinical trial. Because if you don't observe these patients in a setting where you know, it's, a, it's a fixed environment where you can learn a lot from their tumor or biologic behavior, you know, the next generation of the trials and hypotheses cannot be formulated. And so uh, the uh, enrollment in these clinical trials, particularly for you know, HER2 or immunotherapy-directed studies, we have a lot of ideas and a lot of clinical trials, but not enough patients going on them. And most of the time, what happens is that because gastric cancer is so common in Asia, uh, the, uh, these global studies are flooded um, by the Asian population. And the biology of the tumor is quite distinct, uh, or can be quite distinct, and therefore does not help us answer our pa uh, questions that are important for our patients in U.S. So we have to do the, uh, the work ourselves and uh, motivate our patients uh, and our practitioners to refer patients to for clinical trials, uh, because that's the only way that we can advance the field.